Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute since I've uploaded a video, um, so I just kind of wanted to jump back in um, since it was like a year ago, um, or almost a year ago when I started my YouTube channel. So since it's almost or right at that year mark, I wanted to share a video, kind of give you guys some updates on what's been going on with me and our family and yeah, and get back into sharing more <laughs> um, videos. So life updates. So, so much has happened since um, the last video I recorded. The last two videos, I was pregnant. I shared our pregnancy announcement. And um, since then, I am, if you don't follow me on social media, um, if you do, then you already know. But if you do not, I am no longer pregnant. Um, I experienced a miscarriage and before I get into that, um, I just kind of wanted to share something on a happier note. Um, Joe and I got another dog. So you've seen Cairo in a few of our earlier videos this year, but we got another dog, another Husky. His name is Koa and he came to us at, um, an interesting time. <laughs> I like to say a funny time, but at the same time, it was like, we got two dogs. Okay. And we're doing this puppy phase again. Um, he's asleep right now, but hopefully you guys will see him in some future videos. But he is four months old and our dog Cairo is two years old. So they are learning each other. Koa is in that puppy phase. If you've had a puppy or dealt with a puppy, you know, they go through that biting and, and nipping phase and they're into everything and they just so curious about everything so that's what we're dealing with Cairo is out on our balcony um he likes to people watch so hopefully he doesn't interrupt my video but anyway so on a happier note that's what we've been kind of dealing with he's been a nice distraction for us sometimes frustrating <laughs> but a nice distraction for us so um so yeah hopefully I'll you guys will get to see them in some future videos but um anyway so yeah miscarriage did not think that that was going to be part of our story um it has been a month since i miscarried i would say it's been a hard month just kind of dealing with that um man yeah it's 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 just been difficult so oh at um, my seven week mark, I had two doctor's appointments. The first one was a third beta test. So that's basically where they check the HCG level to make sure it's rising um, the way that it's supposed to. Um, so I went in for that and my numbers were rising. My numbers were looking good. And with each previous test, my numbers were looking great. And um, so that was good to hear. We were able to have um our first ultrasound at that seven week mark so we were excited about that we were excited especially because everything was progressing perfectly um as we were told and reassured like everything seemed to be progressing perfectly so we went in for an ultrasound and there was no heartbeat there was no heartbeat i remember the doctor was super quiet <laughs> during that ultrasound and I was just like, this is not good, it's not good. And I already have like PTSD from just doing ultrasounds anyway, because every time, I promise you, every time I have an ultrasound, it's always something. I see a fibroid or scar tissue or whatever. I was trying to do this without crying. That's why it's taking me so long to share this video because I wanted to be able to Get through without crying but this is the nature of this journey this is the nature of what i'm dealing with right now so these feelings are going to come up um let me just oh, take a deep breath so um so yeah he was quiet and you know it was like okay what's going on and joe was like i don't know what we're looking for but I see something, you know, is it time to celebrate? Like, is this good? Like, what's going on? And he was like, you know, I'm not finding a heartbeat. 
Um, and he asked the nurse and she was like, I don't see anything. That was hard. That was hard. You guys know that we did IVF. We started IVF in January and I had three canceled transfer appointments. There was three times that there was a um, transfer that I was supposed to have of the embryo. The first one was back in March. <clears throat> it was canceled. And then COVID hit. And, you know, it was just so much leading up to this, you know, from two different surgeries in addition to the one I had last year to the transfer. And it's like, why, God? Like, why all of that? Uh, literally almost a year from the stems, the IVF process, or the, yeah, the, the stems, the egg retrieval, like almost a year from that to get to this point to transfer every, you know, the transfer was successful. And then to get to the heartbeat ultrasound, the, you know, one of the most important ones, and there's nothing. I'm still, and I don't know how long, but I'm still going, I'm still battling with that. Like, it just does not make sense. Like, why go through all of that? You know, even considering the fact that I have a diminished, diminished ovarian reserve um, diagnosis, low AMH. So all of that's a factor, you know, as to why I only got two eggs. So it's like, why go through all of that? To get to the point where there's no heartbeat and you're miscarrying it just it's hard it does not make sense it it it's um heartbreaking it's devastating it's disappointing it's um frustrating it's i mean almost low-key like just feel betrayed you know what i mean like here we are on this crazy faith journey. We've done everything. I didn't even want to do fertility treatment. Like I didn't even, it took me two years to even get to the point where I'm like, okay, let's do fertility treatment. And to be at this point where I'm like, okay, let's do it. And then it's like, oh, you got to have surgery. Um, possibly going to have to remove your tubes. And I didn't even want surgery. Like I just didn't want any of this, but I was obedient <laughs> and finally did, you know, the things that God or I felt God was telling me to do. And it's like, we've done all this stuff, God, like we've been faithful. I've shared my story. I did not want to share, especially not now, but I've shared my story and I've shared it on a, you know, multiple platforms. Like I'm doing all this stuff and we get to this point of finally transferring our embryo, finally getting a pregnancy, a positive pregnancy test. I've never had that, only to lose our baby, our one and only embryo that made it. Like, I'm still dealing with it. I really am. And, you know, I'm just dealing with it a day at a time. It doesn't make sense, but I will say there has to be something wonderful beautiful that's going to come out of this it has to be and i still do not have the promise that god has given me so i that gives me hope that there's something coming but it's just heartbreaking because this was our our one and only embryo that made it and i don't know what the future holds i don't know what our next step is i know we do have to go through treatment again, but I don't know what that is going to look like, if I can be completely honest. Because we, because I have um, DOR, um, and then, you know, for me to go through stems earlier this year and to only retrieve two eggs, you know, where an average woman may retrieve anywhere from 15 to 24, for me to have only retrieved two eggs, and then go through the fertilization process and then waiting five days to see, you know, if it makes it to the blastocyst stage and get tested and all that. I just, I don't know. So we have an appointment or actually haven't made it yet, but we're planning to meet with our doctor in January to talk about the next steps and see what the next plan is. And I'll share 
that when it comes. Um, right now, we kind of have some ideas of what we want to do going forward. But again, I, I'll probably share that after we speak with our doctor and just kind of hear all of our options for the next step. I just, I don't know. This has been a crazy, crazy year. I mean, in so many ways, like dealing with the pandemic and how that drastically, I mean, and traumatically hit my family. We experienced <clears throat> three deaths in our family. Um, two other family members caught COVID, but they survived. Like, it's just, this has been a very trying year and I'm still here. <laughs> We're still surviving. Um, and honestly, like it's the prayers, like I'm thankful that I shared my story because there's so many people who are praying for us. So many people who have reached out to us. So many people who've been inspired, touched by our story that are lifting us up in prayer. And I haven't even been able to pray for myself. Like it's been over a month or yeah, it's been a month since the miscarriage. And I probably like pray, pray like a good prayer, like maybe once. It's just, I'm in a space right now where it's like, God, <laughs> I need a break from you right now. Like, if that makes sense, like, I'm just so frustrated. And if I can be honest, like, I'm angry with God, like, I'm angry. And I'm giving myself grace and permission to be angry because God can handle it. He can handle our anger. He can handle our frustration. Like, he wants us to be honest with him. And I was like, I'm being honest. Like, I'm angry. I don't understand. And I, there's a possibility I may never understand. But right now, I'm angry. Um, so, yeah, it's just been a very difficult month. I never thought that I would experience miscarriage. Like, if I could be honest, I thought because of everything I've been through that I would be exempt. For miscarriage like for me losing both having to have both my tubes removed like that was a loss and then not being able to produce that many eggs only two eggs that was a loss and then from those two eggs losing one that was a loss so it's like I feel like I've experienced a lot of loss on this journey so I just somehow felt like that that I would be exempt from it. Um, but I don't know. I just, I, during the time, the short, short period that I was pregnant, um, I do remember having a couple dreams, like where I woke up and I was just bleeding. Um, so like every time, like I know everyone goes through this fear, like, you know, going to the bathroom and wiping and, you know, praying that they don't see blood. Um, which I never did during that time. It wasn't only, it wasn't until the week of the miscarriage that I actually started seeing blood. But, um, you know, I had that dream and I was like, what is this? You know, and I feel like God was like in small ways preparing me for this. Um, but I just was like, he can't be preparing me for that. Like that can't be it. Um, I don't know. I don't have any words like it's just it's been very difficult if you have ever experienced miscarriage then you you get it like the emotions is literally like a piece of you is gone I have my days and I allow myself to have my bad days I feel like God is just been with us been with me just comforting me like he just won't let me go and Cairo has been such a joy he's been our my comfort Koa has been our joy like he just he's so funny but um God has been with us and he's been so good to us um it's just it's hard Man, it's hard, especially when you just don't know, like you can't see what the future holds. 
And that's where your faith is tested the most. And I feel like with this journey, with this crazy faith journey, um, God is testing me um, with the unknown, if that makes sense. Because I'm a planner and I like to have a plan. I like to see what is what it looks like before I put my foot forward or before I move forward. Like at this point, like I, I have no choice but to trust God. I have no choice but to take him at his word and continue to step out on faith and step off the boat. You know what I mean? Like I have no choice but to continue to do that because not only because of what he's promised, but because he's shown himself trustworthy. Like even though this is hard, even though this is so difficult and probably the worst thing or the worst thing I've experienced in my life, like I still believe God has a plan. I believe that there is purpose in this pain. And I know that when I decided or when God first told me to share my story, I knew that it wasn't going to be easy. And I knew that there was going to be some things that I would have to go through. And like a part of me just kind of felt like I didn't want to claim it because I'm like, I'm not claiming that over my life. But there's a part of me that, sorry, that's Koa. <laughs> there was a part of me that kind of knew that miscarriage was going to be part of our story. And I don't know if it's so that, hold on. I don't know if it's so that we can, I don't know, be more relatable to people or be able to speak from experience as we continue to share and encourage others. Like, I don't know the reason for that, but I just, a part of me felt like that will possibly be part of our story. And again, like I said, like I just feel like God in small ways was preparing us for this. And um, it's, it's been hard. <laughs> It's been hard. What's, what's helped us or what's kept me thus far, and I'll probably share this in an upcoming video once I, you know, continue to go through and continue to heal. But so far, what's helped me um, is just finding little ways to honor our daughter. You know, she was she was real. She existed, you know, yes, for a short time, but she was a, she existed and um you know even though we only carried her for a short time we were so attached like like i said we had a name for her we um i mean we were buying stuff for her like i mean it was just the whole thing like she was our daughter so i found i found such comfort in finding just different ways to honor her to honor her memory um, and I'll just continue to share those as I, as I do them or as I desire to, but, um, oh, that's where we are now dealing with the aftermath of a miscarriage and all the feelings and things that come along with it. Um, it has been encouraging to us just to hear, see, how we've helped other people and like you just don't know how your story is impacting others you don't know how just from you sharing is helping somebody else but that blesses me when someone tells me that they've been blessed by us sharing so that's been encouraging for us as well but um I think my dogs need to go out so I'm gonna end this video here if you see this just Pray for us. Um, I will continue to share more um, as we continue on this journey because it's not over. Um, I knew it wasn't over when we, you know, we got the one embryo or we got two embryos and one died or didn't make it. Um, but now it's definitely not over. So we will continue to share. And um, I plan to share some other things like I mentioned before. So, yeah. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for um, just all the encouraging messages we've received, all the people that I've connected with um, via social media. I just truly appreciate you all. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.